Well, welcome to the shop, everyone. On today's video, we're going to start trying to turn this engine build stand into an engine running stand. And uh, as I've been, you know, thinking over like how to design it, I, I want to be able to turn it back into uh, a engine build stand uh, pretty easy. So here are some of my thoughts anyway. So I was thinking these legs here are hollow and they go back about 29 inches. So if I make so, have some square tubing that would recess back in there and come out on both sides over there, you know, I could come out however far I needed to go. And you also could slide it back in there and I might weld a nut and a bolt that you would actually crank down onto it too. As you slide it out, you could lock it down however far you wanted it out at that time. And what I would do with those things that slide out, that's what the radiator would mount on. So I'd probably have some uh, one by one, one by one square tubing and somehow it would slide down in there, notch, probably some kind of a bolt to hold it in place. And then, uh, you know, the radiator, you could adjust it how far out, how far in. And also on that same note, I'd probably mount a fuel cell right there on it as well. Uh, you know, the radiator, the fan. Then over here on that same piece, I'd probably have the control panel that would have like ignition switch, uh, power on switch, all the gauges. And that being said, because the throttles, you know, right there. And so that way you could uh, fire the engine up, work the throttle, get it running. And, you know, back here, I've had this stand probably 25, 30 years, and I shortened this for some reason. I can't recall why I did it. So I'm actually gonna have to extend these out a little bit further to where, you know, your flywheel can run in there. And of course, your uh, starter would mount right there. So we gotta move that out a little bit. And, you know, on Chevrolet's, it's, uh, pretty easy this this part here would work just fine but on like some Mopars and some Fords you know you'd have to have uh, you'd have to have the bell housing so you would need some way to either bolt the back of the bell housing onto this whether you drill new holes I'm not sure but anyways we're just gonna build it for a Chevrolet at this point and the other thing I want to do with these legs down here is you got like the engine motor mounts and I want to have some kind of a bracing that would slide back on here, back and forth on here, come up, probably swivel back and forth, maybe have uh, some threaded rod or something in it. But anyways, you know, depending on where your motor was, forward or back, it could slide some, but also it attached these, and also you could put some of the weight of the engine on it. So that's something else we're gonna have to figure out how we wanna go about doing that. All right, so let's look at some of the parts I bought for it. Uh, now for the power for it, like most people have like a battery set up. Uh, I have a car trailer and it has a winch on it. And uh, what I did is I got welding wire, like the alt wire that you would use for, got some over here, should have some, some you know, thick welding wire. And I, I made it a long extension cord that goes from my pickup truck to the winch and I never ever have had to worry about a dead battery. Trailer can sit for a year and a half, two years. I jump, get everything hooked up and if I have to winch a car onto the trailer, I plug it up and it works every time. So I kind of felt, wanted to do the same thing. So like welding wire, everything has gone up so much and to get anything like two gauge, uh, I just found if I bought jumper cables at two gauge uh, 20 feet was about the cheapest way I could get that kind of cable and then these actual plug-ins are like for forklifts battery charging and that's what I use on my truck and I'm also since I have a little forklift that I run around here I'm also gonna put one of those uh, sockets on there to where I can access that battery or even my truck battery when I wanted to 
like fire an engine up. That way I always have a fresh battery. I know there's a good charge. So anyways, that's the thinking on that, on how to get a power. I'm just gonna make me extension cord and let it plug up to either my truck or my little forklift. Let's see, for fuel, I bought this little fuel cell. It's another eBay item. Uh, it's been a while since I bought it, so I don't remember. I think it's a gallon and a half, maybe two gallons, don't remember. And that's eBay buy, and for a fuel pump, I got me a little electric fuel pump, and it's for like a carburetor. So it only has about seven pounds of pressure on it. I didn't worry much about how much it flowed because the engine, most it'll be doing being revved up to maybe 2,500 RPMs to break in a cam, uh, idling most of the time. So it's never gonna be under a whole full load. So that, in my opinion, will be plenty to supply it. And here are some of the fittings I bought for it to uh, plumb everything up and get everything where it needs to go. And I'm, I'm thinking I'll mount that on the front to where it'd be easy for you to put fuel in it, things like that. Let's see, next thing is the gauges. So I got me, uh, what are they, auto meter gauges. And so I, of course I got the oil pressure gauge. Uh, the voltage gauge, I, I wanted the voltage, not the amperage, just because if you have a very low volt situation, it can make a motor run pretty bad too. It's just another instrument to look at that if things aren't going right, if I see 12 plus volts I know well that's not the problem and then for the water gauge just so you know the temperature of the engine sitting there running as you're running it in checking everything out also for that instrument cluster I got me a Bosch tack so we can just see what kind of rpms we got say we're breaking in a cam we want it to run at 2000 rpms we'll we'll be able to set the idle screw to let it run at that rpm uh, and then we come over to other parts is that's going to be the main disconnect to turn everything on and off as far as power everything. Uh, that's going to be probably the ignition start or the start switch for the starter to turn over. And that switch there I'm thinking is going to be for the ignition. So I want to be where I can keep it turned off and I can still bump the motor over to like set lash or whatever I'm doing. Dropping the distributor in just where I can bump everything over and not have it fire up. Uh, got a Ford type uh, starter solenoid for the uh, starter on the engine and uh, got some solderless terminals to connect everything with let's see what else we got here okay so then we have the fan now uh, electric fan now this one came with like a, a thermostat and everything it has a real relay in it so I'll probably run the low voltage or I would say not the power side the control side through the relay and then the power side through the relay to where for the amps that it draws I think it has it in there where it can turn on and off itself but I'm just gonna want to control that myself so I probably won't use all that uh, the radiator is aluminum radiator uh, I got this from a friend we did some trading on it and uh, it's not a real huge radiator but uh, since the engine is not going to be under a load and it's just gonna be running and it's open air you know, it's uh, it's not an engine compartment sitting at a stoplight and things like that. I think it'll be more than sufficient for uh, running something in. Uh, we'll see. And the fan, that was an eBay item too. Just something I found on eBay that looked pretty good for the price. All right, so that's uh, a lot of the components for it. Uh, so the steel shop I go to, you know, a lot of times you can go to these steel shops and you'll find drops you know where they've cut stuff out for other customers and stuff and sometimes you can buy those drops a little bit cheaper than if they cut a new piece and so here's some of the steel I got I know the sun's out I don't know how good you guys have seen this it looks awful on my little camera screen but anyways uh got this aluminum diamond plate that I'm hoping that I'll probably put the instrument cluster into tack switches and all that stuff um I got this 4x4 four four square tubing and I plan on cutting it down to a different size on some ends and that's going to be part of what I think is going to those uh, supports that I want to go up and hold the engine where the uh, engine mounts are. Got some 1x1 one, one one square tubing, some 1.5 square tubing and some 2 inch square tubing and the two inch square tubing 
the engine stand itself, you know, it uh, it measures about two and an eighth, or I'm sorry, two and a quarter. And so, you know, the two inch is going to be pretty loose in there. And I, like I say, I plan to put like a, a nut and bolt that would screw into it. But as far as its up and down looseness, I don't think I want to put any kind of nuts and bolts up here. So I actually might weld some steel. What did I do with that? But anyways, uh, this is just the idea. I don't know if I'm going to do it or not. But I might like plate it on the top and bottom just to make it thicker to make it a little bit tighter fit in the engine stand all right well that's the idea nothing else to do but let's get to it Well, okay, we got the two by two square tubing all cut out. And that's what I plan with a slide. I can actually slide it all the way back in there and pull it out when you need it. I'm gonna have a nut and bolt welded here that will push up against it to push it against the side. But uh, as far as the up and down goes, you know, as you come out with it, you know, I, I don't really, like that a lot so I might plate the top and the bottom with some steel to tighten that up in there to where it's not so loose now going this way I'll have that nut that'll push it against that but as far as the up and down uh, I don't have anything so I'm probably gonna plate this with some steel to tighten that up so I'm gonna take my plasma cutter and I'll take some of that sheet metal right there and I'm gonna go plasma cut some strips that I'm gonna cap the top and bottom to tighten that up a little bit in that engine stand or that engine, you know, the, the tubing. All right, well, let's get at it. Okay, got the plasma cutter set up. Uh, getting ready to make a cut for them spacers. So let's get to it. All right, got the spacers welded onto the tubing. And when you slide it into that hole, you know, it's a lot, a lot tighter than it is, but I don't know if you can see it, there's a seam where they, you know, seam these together when they make them. And that seam and, and you know, the height seems to change a little bit in there. So with these spacers, you know, it'll slide back to a, a distance, then it stops and gets, caught so I'll have to probably put this on my milling machine and mill a little bit off to uh, make it slide already in but anyways yeah the 
as far as it uh, moving up and down, took care of that. So uh, let's stick it in the mill and take a little bit off and see if we can't get them to slide back and forth uh, fairly easy. Okay, we got it set up on the milling machine. I'm uh, trying to make a slight cut. Uh, really just want to take off just enough to where it'll slide in and out. I kind of want it to stay as tight as I can get it, but none of this stuff is very precision, so I'm going to have to do the best I can with what I got. Okay, so got these where they'll slide in and out nicely. Not too loose, a little bit loose, but uh, a lot better than it was. So we got that part done. And of course, I'm gonna drill a hole and put a little nut and bolt on both sides that would crank down. And uh, since it's pushing on this side, if it gets marred up from the bolt head, it won't matter because, you know, I have like a almost a quarter inch clearance, so that part should work, work out pretty good. All right, let's move on to the next. Well, okay, I think I'm gonna end this video off. Uh, the next video, I'm gonna either try to fabricate the one by one square tubing that'll go up and hold the radiator in this area. Or, if I can't figure that one out, I might make the uh, fabricate the part that's going to slide back and forth, come up, and actually go on to the motor mount for support there. So, anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, please hit that like, subscribe if you'd like to, and as always, we appreciate you guys so much for watching. Thanks so much.